So I'm going to ask you if you agree with this statement. Uh, allowing, and I'm not suggesting the answer one way or the other, I just want to know what you believe. Allowing biological males to compete in an all-female sport deprives women of the opportunity to participate fully and fairly in sports and is fundamentally unfair to female athletes. This is a very difficult societal question that you're asking here. I know what, what underlies it. I know it. what I, you're I, going to be attorney general. Well, but uh, I, I may not be the one who has to make policy decisions like that, but it's not that I'm adverse to it. Look, I think every human being should be treated with dignity and respect. Um, and I, I, that's an overriding sense of my own character, but an overriding sense of what the law uh, requires. Um, um, this, the particular uh, question of how Title IX applies in schools is one, and in light of the Bostock case, which I know, I know you're very familiar with, is something that I would have to look at um, uh, when I have a chance to do that. I've not had the chance to consider these kinds of issues in my uh, career so far. But I agree that this is a difficult question. It's actually not a difficult question. It's really not. And the fact that the soon-to-be Attorney General of the United States pretends or maybe really does believe it's a difficult question tells you just how far we've gone. The, uh, the Overton window has been shifted on all of this, as you know. The, the grounds, the, the range of acceptable conversation on so many subjects has been changing with extreme speed. And the last 10 years, it feels like it has really hit a new gear. Um, and the last few years, you've seen even with a Republican administration, the left can still advance agenda items, and they have been doing that. Uh, and they were they were able to advance, you know, the 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 irony of Trump for four years in office was that they kept calling him a fascist. And then they used a pandemic while Trump was in office to force his hand and and allow for authoritarians to take over, basically to, to hand power over. Trump, they said, was an authoritarian, but they handed over power to actual authoritarians in the, in the lab coats uh, like Fauci. Uh, but, you know, you all know how I feel about that. I mean, I, I'm on a I'm on a one not a one man quest. There are others out there who are saying stuff that's right in line with me. And I, I, I appreciate every single one of them who will poke their heads out and will take all the heat. I've seen so many people. I obey Fauci because I care and because I don't want people to die and I'm responsible and I believe science. I'm like, Dude, they've been so brainwashed. So brainwashed. They really think I, I don't believe in science. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's it's terrifying. Honestly, I think that we got used to, to believing that there was something unique about Trump that was making libs go crazy, but that they weren't actually going to stay that crazy. I think we convinced ourselves that Trump derangement syndrome was going to be a phenomenon unique to while Trump was in office. And then, you know, there'd be this re return to normal, the whole idea of the return to normal. And what we've seen is they're, they're, no, they're not returned to normal. They're deranged. And now instead of it just being all focused on Trump, it's all of us are responsible, let's say, for the January 6th riot or something, or all of us are white supremacists or white nationalists or you know, insurrectionists and all these horrible things they're throwing out there. When I say us, I just mean you voted for Trump. It doesn't even matter. You're not white. You voted for Trump. You're still supporting white supremacy. And there are millions of people who are not white who voted for Trump. But that's still allegedly white supremacy. This is what the left believes and what they say. But that level of delusion, that level of, huh? It doesn't just fade away. And they found this, this thing to grip on with COVID-19 and, and they've had this enormous excuse for authoritarianism and they have taken it at every turn and I know where they're going because I understand their mentality I don't pretend that I, I know the I can understand the trajectory of the virus or, or predict that in advance I know what the response to it from the authoritarian Democrat left will be and I have known and I've been right and this is one of my big concerns is that the ultimate gaslighting will go into effect here pretty soon where they will start to try to convince you 
that there's no such thing as normal. That what you knew of as normal before 2020, that wasn't really normal. No. No, we should have really been wearing masks during flu season all along. We should have had social distancing rules in effect all along. There should be limitations on capacity at different venues and places. Too too dangerous for the spread of diseases. Who knows when another COVID will come up? This, I'm not saying that this argument will win. I certainly hope and believe that it won't. But it is an argument that you will see popping up. That there really is no such thing as normal. That there was no normal before, and now it's whatever they darn well tell you it is. That's what normal becomes. I think you know that this is the way this country is heading right now. This is the way the Democrats are taking this country, taking over. They've already gotten so much political power. And have they been trying to have they spent even the first hundred days of Biden's administration showing us what good governance looks like and doing things where you say, wow, that's actually you know what? They really did a good job on that one. I'm going to give them credit on it because I I will tell you this. Some of you are going to be sometimes frustrated with me. And you have been, I know, in the past and I get your messages about it. If a Democrat does something that's good for America and good for uh, us as a people. I will say it. I I don't hate everything that Democrats do because they're Democrats. I don't think that all Democrats are bad people or evil or anything like that. I'm not some maniac. I know there are people that are like that. But they haven't done anything. I mean, it's amazing (laughs) that that Biden's been in charge for two months and or this is, you know, his second month, whatever it is. And they've done nothing. Absolutely nothing that I can point to and say, you know what? That one actually makes some real sense. That's really good. It's going to help us out. You know, maybe the trade off isn't one that I necessarily would have made, but I I can see where they're coming from on that. I mean, what the covid bill? They they could have done the covid bill six months ago. They should have done it six months ago or whatever it is back in July, August. But no, no, they want they want three hundred plus billion dollars for cities, cities that are just planning to raise taxes on their productive inhabitants anyway, as they're fleeing as fast as they can. So this is all a way of saying we don't have this fundamental shared territory anymore. We, we don't have this area, this place where we see eye to eye on key issues uh, with the Democrats. And this is very concerning for the future of this country. And I started this with uh, Merrick Garland being asked about women competing in men's sports. I, I, I want to speak about this in a way that, that is clear and honest and and it's not it's not trying to trigger anybody it's not trying to be disrespectful or anything like that as you know i'm it's funny my politics i'll I'll get yelled at by leftists i always want to point out i'm nicer to people than all these leftist pundits that i know and come across i I treat people with more dignity and respect than they do all the time because i i know a fair number of people on the left and a lot of them are really nasty bitter vicious crappy people Uh, But they think that that is canceled out, you see, by their policy preferences, which make them such good people. They're so they're so in touch with their emotions and they're they're so willing to be sympathetic to everybody and the downtrodden. And, you know, they apologize for white supremacy in our society and all this kind of stuff. Right. Okay, sure. Um, We are we are now at a point in America where we cannot agree on. Men are not women and women are not men as a a definitive, true and universal statement. Now, I understand that this this could be a moment where you say, oh, but that's just one issue. And, you know, the transgender community, for example, is a very small percentage overall of of the country. Um, So it is, you know, it's it's a minority. It's it's a a very small minority group. Um, But. This is actually about this is more about the underlying philosophy of a lack of agreement on on absolute truth or on fundamental truth. Something as straightforward as men are not women, women are not men is a statement you cannot say. You're you're not allowed to do that anymore. It's more complicated to borrow from Merrick Garland. I mean, as any guy who played a reasonable, uh, you know, reasonable level of high school athletics will tell you. If you're a decent male high school athlete 
and you go try to compete, let's say in a scrimmage, a co-ed scrimmage for fun against women's uh, women's sports teams, if you have some facility in that sport, and like I said, not at a high level, you know that men have an enormous advantage over women in athletics. We all know this. There's a physical difference. It is a real thing. And you could say, well, just like the transgender issue, why do conservatives focus on this? Because I, I don't like being told to bend the knee and say things that are not true. And I really don't like living in a country, living in a society where the consensus is against truth on any issue. And this is this is clear. I mean, you have the soon to be attorney general of the United States saying this is a complicated issue. It's not complicated. It is not fair for biological men to compete against biological women in competitive athletics. It's very straightforward. It's actually not complicated at all. And for those who say it's it's a minor issue, even within sports. No, it's not. All you need are a couple of uh, transgender males uh, or transgender females, rather, who are competing against biological females in sports. And, and they'll set all the records and they'll they'll win all the you know statewide tournaments or national level tournaments or whatever it is. I mean, you can see go look, look at some of the photos out there of some of the transgender females that are competing against biological females. And you go, OK, well, that individual is going to be like the best at that sport in the state, maybe in the country. Now, imagine if you worked, you've worked countless hours, blood, sweat and tears, getting up early in the morning, perhaps being on traveling team, sacrifice a lot of time with family, a lot of time with friends to to really excel in your sport. You know, you're trying to be, you know, the women's 800 meter, uh, 800 meter champion, let's say, in track. And sure enough, you know, you get to the point where you're at the NCAA championship and you're you're thinking you're and a biological um, male who's now a transgender female shows up and and beats you and sets the record and you know and, and by the way that record will also affect everybody else all the other females who are competing we all know this we all understand this this is not a really but the, but what the left does is they get emotionally unhinged they get emotionally upset how dare you you're so mean you're so nasty well are we dealing in reality or are we dealing in fe- are we dealing in feelings are we dealing in reality or are we dealing in uh, whatever people decide to conjure up as a narrative of the moment ask Merrick Garland this guy's going to be the top law enforcement officer in the United States and he can't answer a very straightforward question here can't answer a very straightforward question and we should all wonder why why he knows the answer but he won't say it And he knows the answer is something that the left doesn't want to hear, the real answer. So he won't speak the truth. What does that mean? 